everyone. My name is Elizabeth Porter, and I am going to talk to you today about the importance of global citizenship education and how to integrate global citizenship education into your homeschool, your classroom, and your home with your own kids. Um, first of all, I just want to go ahead and introduce myself again. I'm Elizabeth Porter. Um, I am a National Board Certified Teacher in French, and I also um, have a bachelor's degree in French and applied linguistics, as well as a master's degree in elementary education, and I'm a curriculum specialist in uh, world languages, English language arts, and social studies. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. I love global citizenship education, and I think it is a huge important part of creating an integrated learning experience for your students, whether you are a classroom teacher or a homeschool teacher. So let's get going on this. First of all, I wanna ask you to think about something for a second. What is a citizen? exactly. What is the definition of that word to you? And normally when I'm with a live group, I pose this question and give just a few minutes to answer and, and, and ask some people to, to give their thoughts on this. What is a citizen? Sometimes I get um, the answer of a citizen is a person who is legally a member of a country or a, a, a legally a person living in a country. Sometimes I get a person who is from a country. Sometimes I get that a citizen is a person who is a member of a community. Well, a citizen is just that a person belonging to a community of other people. I think a lot of times we think of citizenship as a sense of being a, a voting citizen of a country or a legal person living in a country. But really, you can be a citizen of any type of community. You can be a citizen of your school. You can be a citizen of your church. You can be a citizen of the city where you live. You could be a citizen of the, um, it, it, just any type of community that is out there. And what I am trying to get at here is that when we talk about global citizenship, we're teaching our students that they are citizens of the planet, of this world, that they are a community of humans, and we all belong here. So let's talk about global citizenship. And this definition comes from the UNESCO, which is the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. It's based in Paris, France. Many of you are probably familiar with the United Nations. There's different um, uh, departments of the United Nations. And this one specifically focuses on like I said, education, science, and culture. And maybe you've heard of some of the heritage sites across the world. UNESCO is the one organization that um, certifies those heritage sites. So for example, Stonehenge is a heritage site. Um, the Grand Canyon is a heritage site. Notre Dame in Paris is a heritage site. Um, there are many, many heritage sites around the world. And so this is um, the organization that certifies those. They also certify places um, her as heritage cities. So th these are places that are ingrained in um, the, the culture of the people that are around them. It could be um, natural, naturally occurring um, places like the Grand Canyon, or they could be um, person built. So a global citizen refers to a sense of belonging to a broader community and common humanity, and it emphasizes political, economic, social and cultural interdependency and interconnectedness between the local, the national and the global. 
so it shows our students how they are connected and how their actions affect others all around the world. And especially now with our increasing global society. So we talk about why is this important? And I just mentioned our increasing global society. We live in an increasingly interconnected world. People are moving around more and more and more. There are people who are from different countries, different cultures, different ways of life, living in our own communities. But the other idea is that people are traveling more. And when we travel, we want to expose ourselves and our students to connecting with people, not just going to see sites, but actually getting in there and being with the people and learning about the people. And this gives them a wider view of the world, better communication skills, because different cultures might interpret things in different ways. Language affects a lot of the way that we see our world and the way that we interpret our world. And we need to start within because many of, um, many of our communities are extremely diverse and have a lot of different cultures living within them, even if the people were born and raised in the same community. Culture does not just refer to country. It refers to race. It refers to uh, sexual orientation. It refers to uh, heritage, cultural background. A person's uh, heritage might come from a different country or even a different part of the United States or North America. It might refer to a person's religion and religious beliefs. Culture is also socioeconomic. A person who lives in great wealth has a vastly different culture than a person who lives in extreme poverty. So it helps us understand each other and come to each other from a place of compassion. And this is especially important because our workplaces are becoming more and more multicultural by the day. So we need to learn how to communicate effectively with each other. We need to learn how to have those skills so that we can throw away these preconceived ideas of each other and get to know each other and work together and communicate and, and, and solve problems together and get to that higher order thinking. Now, historically, citizenship did not extend to all. Historically, for example, only men or property owners were able to be citizens. During the past century, there has been a movement towards inclusion rather than exclusion. And so we have come a long, long way in the past century, but we still have a long way to go as well. And the concept of citizenship is changing because of this. So um, Ban Ki-moon, who is the UN Secretary General, he said, global citizenship education gives us a profound understanding that we are tied together as citizens of a global community and that our challenges are interconnected. Doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter who you are, we are all human beings. We all have a right to be here. And understanding and global citizenship education leads to these connections that are made between people and creates for a more peaceful world. The UNESCO um, defines some global citizenship competencies, and they even have some standards for global citizenship education. 
So the three main competencies for this are the cognitive to acquire knowledge, understanding, and critical thinking about global, regional, national, and local issues, and the interconnectedness and interdependency of different countries and populations. The socio-emotional is to have a sense of belonging to a common humanity sharing values and responsibilities, empathy, solidarity, and respect for differences and diversity. And behavioral, to act responsibly at local, national, and global levels for, more, for a more peaceful and sustainable world. So, when I think about global global citizenship education, I think about this is the first step in diplomacy and ambassadorship. One of the things that I do in my job is I travel with students to what I call global citizenship immersion programs around the world. And right now we have um, one in France and one in Spain. And these programs welcome students from all over the world to use a common language, French or Spanish, to connect with other students, other youth from around the world. And they are learning all of these skills in global citizenship education. And what we do is we start out with a preparation course that prepares them to begin this journey of global citizenship. And the first step in diplomacy is getting these students and ambassadorship is getting these students with other youth from around the world. So diplomacy is the art of dealing with people in a sensitive, in a sensitive way. An ambassadorship refers to being a messenger, representative, or advocate, usually in relation to rep representing your own country. So our job um, in these programs is to get the students over and shedding a positive light on in the United States, because they are representing the United States, not only are they representing the United States or Canada, we sometimes have some Canadian students as well. Not only are they representing their country, but they're re representing their families, their own community. And they are doing it in a way where they are over making friends, they're doing it through friendship. And so they're giving these other youth a positive view of Americans. And they, in turn, are taking a positive view of the people from these other countries that they're meeting. So this is the, what we call the first step in diplomacy. And this is why there are exchange programs that happen um, with youth, especially um, high school year abroad, for example. Um, there are exchange programs where students will come to the United States from abroad or we will send our students abroad. And that was started because it was a way for these students to show, to shed a positive light about their own countries in another country and teach people from around the world about who they are and their culture. And it, it, it works beautifully. And so I highly recommend that if you have the opportunity to travel and connect in this way to do it because it really, really promotes peace. So this is this is an activity that I often do with our global citizenship students as part of our prep. It's called Our Cultural Selves. And what it is, is it's an exploration of who they are as people and what made them that way. So they think about what makes you who you are, what parts of you come from the inside, what come from the outside? 
So for example, the inside is um, things that are part of your personality or your temperament. What comes from the outside, from, from your friends, from influences, from your choices, your family, places you've lived. And there's so many things that make up who you are and how you respond to others. And so what we do is we answer these questions. So on the inside of the person, you're going to write or draw pictures of things that illustrate who you are from the inside, from your own choices, from your own development, things that you like, things that you are part of your temperament. I might put, for example, that I am extremely extroverted. I like to be around people. I like to talk. Um, I also have a, a high, uh, a, a quick temper. I get, I get frustrated easily and angry easily. On the inside of the person, I'm uh, sorry, on the outside of the person, you will write words or draw pictures of things that illustrate who you are from the outside. So like your family, like I have a brother, um, I have two sons. Um, I, um, I cook every Friday. I play the trombone. You know, these are just examples, not necessarily true of me. And then we're going to discuss. And what we do is we share. And what that comes to is this also goes on with a personal values inventory. So we look at our values, we look at where they come from, we look at, you know, um, religious beliefs or spiritual beliefs, and we look at, you know, likes and dislikes and interests and all sorts of things. So we do what's called a personal values wheel. And what we come up with is what this leads students to is that the inside and the outside are connected. And then we think about how does your language shape your thinking? How do you think the language you speak shapes your thinking? And we start discussing that and really delving into this. So students really get a good idea. And what happens is we do this before and then we do another one after the travel. And it's amazing to see some of the things that change and that grow and that, you know, are, are, are real progress and changes in, in the students after they've come back. The amount of growth is incredible. So this is one, a, a pre-travel one from um, one of our students. And so this student, for example, um, put on the outside, she likes Dungeons and Dragons. She's what she calls loosely Scandinavian. <laughs> uh, she's a younger sister, um, lots of different uh, things that she put inside and outside. Unfortunately, I don't have her after travel one to show, but this is just an example um, of what you can um, can see of a, what a student is doing before travel. And this student was in ninth grade. Um, and I will tell you that on her um, on her after travel assignment, she had a lot more written on the outside and she had a lot more connections made to the inside because that's what we do with this is we take this and we create connections so she put um, she's caring and then on the out outside she babysits adults um, and teens and um, with special needs. And so we made connections there. The communication, and then we made a connection with speech and debate, and she had added French, etc. So how can we go about integrating culture in our classrooms, in our homeschools, and um, in our everyday lives? Well, first of all, Reading books aloud with your family that have cultural and human messages 
it's that's one incredible way to do this. Um, I suggest there's a couple of books that I highly recommend. One is called The Little Prince. <laughs> if you can read it in French, Le Petit Prince. It is an incredible book. Um, it's about innocence and love and everything that is important in this world. So The Little Prince is a really excellent one that I highly recommend. The next one that I recommend is called Esperanza Rising. Um, Esperanza Rising is a book about a girl who is born to an affluent family in Mexico. And um, tragedy happened and she ended up uh, coming and becoming a migrant worker in California in the 1930s. And I think that this is an excellent book. It's beautiful. It has a lot of cultural messages in it. And I really highly recommend that one as well for book study. Um, the next one is... Um, give the gift of experiences and not things you know we we have this rule in our house at christmas time one thing that you want one thing that you need one thing you can wear and one thing you can read and then those are small things then we give the gift of experiences. You know, our kids have so much stuff. We have so much stuff everywhere. Have you ever just looked at the amount of stuff that you have in your house? Stuff your kids don't even probably play with. So instead, I always say, give the gift of a trip somewhere. Give... Um, piano lessons or dance lessons or um, membership on a sports team or, you know, something where the, the children are experiencing, um, experiencing life. Because those are the things they're going to remember. They're not going to remember. I mean, unless it was a really special, you know, doll or something. They're going to remember those experiences way more than they're going to remember the stuff. And so I highly recommend that. And, you know, honestly, um, people say, well, yeah, but travel is so expensive or travel or going on trips is this. But if you think about how much people spend at Christmas time, you could you could give your kids a wonderful experience. And, and like I said, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Maybe tickets, tickets to go see a, a, a play or, um, you know, the ballet or the opera or the symphony or, or like I said, lessons of some kind, you know, something that gives them an experience and gives them a passion for something as well. It helps them develop this, the, their sense of person. So this, this idea that things come from the outside to help us on our inside. Um, you know, it help your, help, it helps your kids develop their brains and their passions for, for things in life. Um, do an international cooking night. We do this a lot. We just did Morocco the other night. Um, uh, we made a chicken tagine. So um, that that was fun. We've done um, uh, dumplings, Taiwanese dumplings, and um, that was a lot of fun as well. We do a lot of cooking in our house, and my kids love to cook. We made poutine the other night, which is from Quebec. It's that delicious potato or um, French fries with gravy and cheese curds, and it looks really interesting, but it tastes delicious. Um, play games from other cultures or in other languages. So for example, we play petanque in our house. We are French culture and we play a game called petanque, which is kind of like bocce ball, like a, a lawn bowling game. Um, you know, uh, play, play a card game from another culture or um, a, about another culture or a geography game. We have a game called Let's Jet where, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a game where, where you, you travel to different countries and learn about those countries. 
host an exchange student. I had talked about hosting an exchange student before. And um, this is a really, really good one because it creates diplomacy. It gives your family an opportunity to learn about another culture um, by, by having somebody stay with you from another culture. And there are long-term exchanges and there are short-term exchanges. So you could do it like a two-week exchange all the way up to a year. Um, study and create art from other cultures. There are tons and tons and tons of Pinterest with art projects from around the world. But I also highly recommend, um, I've got friends um, who do something called Crafty School Crates and they do art projects from uh, uh, other places and um, just really uh, delve into art from other countries. You know, France is huge with its artists, with impressionism and pointillism and, and um, and you know cubism and all of this uh these different types of artwork go to the ballet the opera visit a museum all of this is culture so that is um the 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 gist of global citizenship education. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions or um, would like more resources or anything, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can email me at Elizabeth Porter at bvwla.com. Um, and I would be happy to help you come up with some ideas, resources. Um, I have tons and tons of ideas. We, we have a Facebook group specifically for um, language with the five senses and global citizenship education. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day.